All right, well, let's get into it. So, hope you're in the right room. Predicting winning franchises. I'm going to be looking at Premier League data. So, introduction. Once we get to questions, I know it's going to show up, so I'm going to get it out of the way now. Why did I choose this topic? I chose this topic because I'm a big soccer fan, especially in Europe. It's been very interesting to me. And I've seen a lot of moves such as this gentleman here, Kylian Mbappe. He went from Monaco to PSG a few summers ago for a reported $133 million. So that got me thinking, is it worth it? Is a player of this quality worth it? I would argue yes. I don't have the data to back that up. But I would argue he was scoring 30 goals this season alone. So then that got me into how might I model this to show that a player of this quality has an impact. So what I did is I created two models. The first model includes every player on every Premier League team. The second model takes out the best goal scorer on each team. So if you know anything about soccer, uh, Harry Kane, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, those were the kind of players that were taken off the list. And what I was hoping is that I would at least see a difference, right? Maybe it's not astronomical, but I'm hoping that with the goal scorer, they're predicted to fall here, without they're predicted to fall here, or wherever that may be. So let's get into it a little bit more. Here's some nitty gritty stuff. This is multilinear regression, and that's kind of how I set my models up. So basically it takes a ton of variables and it pumps out a numerical value, um, which in this case, it's predicting points. Um, so if you don't know anything about the Premier League, they play 36 games, 38 games a season. Team with the most points wins. There's no playoffs, nothing like that. And so what happens is this model spits back coefficients, which range from negative one to one. And the closer it is to those two edges, the more important it is in the model. And if that's confusing, hang tight, just worry about the next slide here. Um, but that final point there, ones and zeros are things that Excel needs to read. I can't necessarily just type in points and Excel is like, oh, I get it, it makes perfect sense now. Um, so I had to put it in, kind of code it into ones and zeros, so I had to make bins. That might be confusing, here we go. Here's an example. This is just a small sliver of what it really is. What you can see up top are the coefficients, ranging kind of all over the board, but nothing too astronomical up there. Uh, the teams are on the left, and then you can kind of see those bins as well. So conceded, 0 to 425 goals, conceded 426 to 584, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you can see ones and zeros scattered all about. Really, it doesn't matter all that much. I just kind of wanted to show you the general idea so you understood what I was talking about as we continue forward here. So the process. So what I did is I summed up every team's totals for two seasons, 2015-16, 2016-17. The reason this is significant is because 2016-17 was a pretty standard Premier League year. Chelsea won the title with 93 points. The year before that, 2015-16, this team won, Leicester City. And if you know nothing about soccer, please, please, please look into this because it's an awesome story. They were predicted to win at 5,000 to 1 odds. There was a better chance of Kim Kardashian becoming president than this team winning the title. <laughs> and that's a true statistic. So that's awesome. So the reason that those two seasons are important is that they were very different. Leicester City didn't score a ton, but they defended like maniacs. Chelsea, pretty opposite. Scored a lot, got scored on a pretty big amount too. So that's why both of those seasons are important. So the model could understand kind of both ways to quote unquote win, if that makes sense. So then what I did is I created dummy variables, as I mentioned, making those bins with histograms. If you don't know what a histogram is, not really that important. Um, but just ones and zeros so Excel could understand. And then I ran Solver to create the training data. And basically the training data is so Excel understands kind of the relationships between the data. You know, if you get scored on more, you're probably going to be lower in the table. Things like that. 
And that returns an R squared. Now R squared is overall performance of the model. You want to see as high as possible up to one. So for both, both of my models, which jumping a little ahead to four here, um, I created the model with the goal scorer and without. Those models returned a 0.97 and 0.94 respectively. So that's 97 and 94% accurate, which makes sense because both, most of the stats up there are pretty logical. As I mentioned, if you score more, you're probably going to have more points, that sort of thing. So the model was awesome. I was really happy about this. And then what I did is I took 2018-19 data, so this season, and I cleaned it up to make sure it had the right variables as my training data because they was taken from two different sheets. Important note there, 2018-19 had a macro in it. And if you don't know what a macro is, basically it's a lot of like techie behind the scenes stuff. And so it could extract the most recent data. So I have data from games that happened like two days ago. So super up to date. Um, and then number six, I compared both models and tried to figure out what they were saying. So before we jump into that, let's look here just very briefly. These are the players that I removed from each team. I'm not gonna go through them with you. If you understand soccer, those names look very familiar. If you don't, hang tight, we'll get into it more. Here are the findings, and this is when it gets super duper exciting. This is why I was right on time, because I was busy pouring over this. Here's the actual table as of yesterday. Here's with goal score, and here's without. I'm not gonna read them through. You can peruse at your leisure, um, but let's talk a little bit about the points to the left. So multilinear regression does have some limitations. It doesn't necessarily understand that there is a maximum amount of points you can get in a season. You can, if, if you had a perfect season and won every single game, that's the most you can get. But the most a team has ever got is 100. So the fact that it's predicting Chelsea to get 103 in this campaign, when currently they're sitting at 67 with only four games to play, is pretty interesting. So that gets me into my next point. Why? I can guarantee you that a lot of you are, especially if you know soccer, are looking at this and going, whoa, 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 why is this team good here, bad here, terrible here? Great questions, all of them. So let's look at two specific stories in particular. The first is Chelsea. As I mentioned before, Chelsea, unreal with their top goal scorer, Eden Hazard. If you don't know who he is, look him up. He's unreal. Um, but with no goal score, they're still predicted to do just a little bit better than they're currently sitting. And of course, if they win out all their games, they're gonna do a little bit better than that. Um, but just interesting to note that regardless of with Hazard or without Hazard, they're a great team. Now, even more interesting, let's talk about Manchester United, a massive club in world football, world soccer, sorry. Bad habit. Um, anyway, unbelievable club. Currently, they're sitting in six at 64 points, but they've been terrible recently. Off. You look at with goal score, and you start from the top. They've got a ton of money. You're thinking, okay, where are they? Where are they? Where? They are sitting all the way down in 17th with 35 points. If that were to happen, I can guarantee you Manchester would explode. This, just that'd be astronomical if that actually ended up happening. But you look at without their goal scorer, which is Paul Pogba, and you see them sitting comfortably in sixth, like they're currently sitting. Why? I don't know for certain, but here's my hypothesis: is that Manchester United have a lot of talent. Paul Pogba is not the most talented on that team. You could argue he is, you could argue he isn't. But they also have really, really top quality strikers, Romelu Lukaku, uh, Martial, just to name a couple. But you look at a team like Leicester City, who I mentioned won the title a few years back, and they have one good striker, but that's about it, and that's Jamie Vardy. 
So you look at them here. Jamie Vardy is helping this team. Paul Pogba, not so much. You get rid of those two. Manchester United is doing great. Leicester City is doing poor. So my hypothesis is that Manchester United has the firepower to be able to survive without Pogba, whereas a team like Leicester City needs to hold on to Jamie Vardy with everything they got. Now, that final point is our squared line. The reason I put that on there is you look at the actual table and you look at either table and there are some very wild accusations here. Manchester United's one of them. You see a team like, uh, where is it, Fulham with 57 points. They are going to get relegated. In other words, go down a division this year. So there are so many different kind of issues that these three tables arise. So is my R squared line? I don't think so, and here's why. I think that the model is just slightly confused because there are still four matches to play, whereas my training data was for a complete season. Now, you're thinking, okay, he cut corners, why? No, not necessarily. Predicting a Premier League match is very, very difficult. I would have to include home and away, who they're playing, how talented that team is, all sorts of factors, injuries, all sorts of factors <coughs> that frankly I'm not cut out to do would be used to predict only four matches, which I didn't see enough benefit to sit for hours and hours and hours to try and do that. So maybe I did cut some corners here, but with only four matches, I don't think it's the end of the world, especially because without the goal scorer, those are pretty realistic numbers from compared to the actual table. So conclusion, removing a team's highest goal scorer has an impact. Duh. Not exactly a shocker there. So let's dive a little bit more and use those stories that I mentioned on the previous slide here. The data shows that Chelsea should keep Eden Hazard. This doesn't factor in finances, which are very important, but the data shows that they are astronomically better with Hazard on their side. Now, he's been linked with a move this summer to a much bigger club. If that club comes in with a ridiculous amount of money, they might be able to get by without it. But the question remains, if Hazard leaves, who fills his place? Chelsea believe it's this man, Christian Pulisic, American, 20 years old, very talented. However, I don't have the data to support whether Christian Pulisic can fit the hole left by Hazard, which you can see in blue over there. And it'd be interesting to see that data, but I don't have access to it. Now, if Christian Pulisic, who's very young and has a lot of potential, can't, Chelsea need to figure out a new system that doesn't rely on Hazard, which is possible, but that requires a little bit of effort from the manager. Now, that final point. As I depicted in the last slide, Manchester United should dump Pogba. The data is there to support it. In recent events, he's been unhappy at Manchester United. So that all comes together for a very nice little conclusion there. But let's jump into some future study. As I mentioned, financial data would be very helpful in determining the value of a player. If they're not being paid a lot, but they're producing a ton, they're going to be a lot more valuable than if you're paying, you know, Eden Hazard a bazillion dollars a year. But equally as important that I'd like to look into is how do you determine best? So I included this picture here because that's on the left, that's Virgil van Dijk from Liverpool and Alison Becker also from Liverpool. Both were brought in within the last year and a half, give or take, and both have been instrumental in turning around the Liverpool defense. They were terrible, and now they have some of the fewest goals allowed in the league. So I included top goal scorer because it was very easy to be like, oh, top goal scorer, gone. But Maybe Virgil van Dijk fits Liverpool's best player. 
that's something I can't distinguish on, but it would be interesting to see what happens if we move best defender. What about goalkeeper? What about midfielder? Right? There's so many what ifs and so many possibilities to look into that I just frankly didn't have the time to do. So that leads into any questions. We got about five minutes. Yes, Brady. So uh, for the seasons, like 15, 16, you said was kind of out there, like different than what normal things. Um, if you didn't have that different data, would it change um, what your what your studies provided? That's a possibility because, frankly, the 2018-19 season is pretty standard. There's not a ton of wild teams, you know, outperforming based on goals and goals against and whatnot. But the reason I included it in there was just in case there was a team, you know, maybe towards the bottom of the table here, so it could help predict that team. Because if I just did a very standard season, but then I was trying to predict a team like Leicester City to win the title, the model's going to have no idea how to do that. It's going to be very confused. So that's why I included both of those to make sure that it was just a little bit more accurate. Let me ask you a question. Of course. You, know, you created training data. Yes, sir. A training model. Yes, which sir. Which basically says this is what happened now, created data, fit that model. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you tested it against an outside data set, did the data set that you tested it with, all the variables that are in that data set, as far as all the things that aren't included in the model, and you mentioned a lot of them there, you know, home and away, mm -hmm. temperature, mm -hmm. player yeah. roster, Ridiculous amount. Yeah. all of those things, yep. did you look and say, of those things that you could figure out, did, did these two, did this, these teams play this percentage at home like in the model? And then when I tested it, did they did they do the same approximately the same number of home ways? Did the rosters change? Because I would argue that yeah, that's a really nice analysis, except it's so much different this year than last year that you're really not looking at apples to apples. Yeah. Which would explain why. For instance, it, did you look at the correlation between goals scored in your training data, average goals scored in your training data? by team and then say, what's the average here to see what the correlation is, just really simple. I did for a, f a few variables, but not every single one. Um, that was actually part of the process. This was a, for a writing intensive course. Um, so that was part of the process, was to just look at general correlation. Uh, but as I mentioned, I didn't do it for everything. Yeah, but did you find generally that things were correlated in the in the test data versus the training data? Generally, yes. Okay. Any other questions? So I'm not a, like I, like, I enjoy watching the European soccer. Mm -hmm. I think, there, is their season just coming to an end now? Four, 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 four days. So it is more um, Do they have the same type of system like Major League Baseball and hockey where there's players that are going up and down in between you know, the pro team and then a secondary team? That is a possibility, yeah. Do um, they have that kind of structure? Um, it's similar, but, but not, not apples to apples. So it's, they have what they call their kind of A team, oh. um, and then their training team, okay. and then they'll have kind of a lower division okay. team as well. So do they shift the players around, and would that be sort of a variable, or did you kind of think about that in terms of, the ones that, because the wins are coming off of that A team, I would imagine, right? But if there's a mm -hmm. lot of shifting around, if that kind of messes things up, it, it It definitely has possibility to, mm -hmm. um, but my thought process in, in kind of combating that is that I was taking the sum, um, so if it, for the whole team. So, so yeah. frankly, it's not going to matter if it's one player scoring a goal versus another player scoring a okay. goal, unless it was that top goal scorer. But they're consistently in the first team yeah, yeah. and going to gonna hang around all season. What was the R square in your test model? In my test? Yeah. Uh, I don't have... You did like 93 and 96 in your training data, but what was your R square when you actually 
did the test, David. Yeah, I, to be honest with you, I did not do that just because of that four-game discrepancy. Yeah, but you ran the regression. Right, but you don't need to include the, you don't need to include an R squared to see if the model is, because frankly, Was if, the model significant? Yes, but frankly, if I didn't have, right, when you're trying to predict something, you don't usually have a baseline. So the, the Premier League ta table from now, I couldn't technically use to form an R squared because I'm trying to predict that. If, does that make sense, what I'm telling you? We'll talk after. Okay. <laughs> so what was a big takeaway from doing this, you know, as a BI person? Is that the data sees, which I kind of already knew, but the data will see things that you can't see. And the data can help or hinder a decision. Like, like, as I mentioned, Paul Pogba has been heavily linked to leave. The data that I have shows it makes sense for the team, not necessarily finances, but it makes sense for the team for him to go. But that raises a whole ton of other questions about how do they fill his shoes, blah, 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 blah. So. Any other questions? Yeah. And just as a reminder, there is an honors convocation reception at 345 in the lobby of the Penny Theater, and then the honors convocation for, for seniors in department honors and things like that is at 430 in the Penny Theater. So please join us. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good afternoon. Good weekend. I can show you that now. Yeah, show me the earth. Show me, show me the earth. So, so here's all I need to say. Right, there is a word. Well, here's the thing. It technically yeah, is. And where are your snowboots? Well, you run it. It's there. Not, not the way that not the way that you do it in multi -level. because there's a way to do it with a certain tool tag, but not with certain. I can, do you want me to show you? Yeah, show me what you mean. Because let me see how you're doing first word. I want to see. It. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, no, that's, that's my random solver, not just progression. So here's because what happens is since there's so many variables yeah. that won't be add on that you're talking about yeah. can't do it. There's too many. There's too many. There's too many. So you have to know that song. Well, that's why there's two. You know. yeah. um, but the point is, I guess I was just going to do it. Yeah, okay. yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. So the point is, is like here, to get an R squared, you need to have an actual point. So whatever R squared is at, say 64. And then you get sum of squared here. Yep. Yep. And then you yep. sum all that up. So, so, so theoretically, okay. if, you're try, if I'm trying to predict, I wouldn't have that 64. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They didn't catch it. You were doing it. So no, no worries. Worries. no worries. No worries. Okay. Our we could yeah. yeah. yeah, go on the same shirt. Yeah. 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 Be like those people. Stand back to back. Oh, I love that. So you can see everything all the time. Honestly, that learns you. Okay. I learned so much. I did. Uh huh. Because what what is Solver doing? It's doing all the stuff that you just talked about. 